Hey guys, Auspicious Aussie here, and welcome to episode 21 of Black Canvas Grappling. Now, of course, today's episode, we're going to be continuing with our Champions Tour, heading into our Test of Champions. And of course, our main event for that show is going to be our boy Reizan Okamoto taking on the world champion in Funakoshi. Now, in the last episode, we kind of discovered something that could potentially allow us to get a little bit better ratings out of Okamoto. And it has a lot to do with... A lot to do with morale. Um, obviously, there's a penalty. So if someone has morale issues, I'm not sure if it... If minor morale issues has anything to do with it. But obviously here, we've got Finley, we've got Okamoto. They both had morale issues. And as a result of that, um, I'm pretty sure that's one of the reasons why uh, Okamoto has, uh, has essentially been performing a lot under what I would sort of expect from him. Now, uh, as you can see, he's obviously irritated about being left off spi uh, fighting spirit which I believe he was injured for. That's pretty frustrating. And then obviously he was angry at uh, getting injured via a botch from uh, Finley O'Faraday. Now, I'm not exactly 100% sure what we should do in this situation. I think a $1,000 bonus is probably the, the best place to start off. So let's just give him $1,000. It didn't really do anything. So let me go back. Did it change? No, it didn't change anything. He still has morale issues. Uh, so that's a problem. Uh, obviously, you can give people time off. Uh, we don't want to give our, you know, our number one contender to the world title time off. So we're going to up the, the bonus. We'll give, try and give him a $2,000 bonus. And obviously, uh, that's not going to work either. He's still irritated. Okay, so... Well, it, it did essentially work. It's, it's gone down to minor morale issues now. So what I want to do is have him in a match. And I want to see if we'll actually be able to... Well, if we can see the penalty that he has from now on. So let's get into our next show. And let's find out exactly what's going to be going on. So let's just, again, we'll just go with our generic venue. Still only expecting about 600 fans anyway. Uh, with our wrestling industry still rising. We, we do kind of need it to be in that green color territory. Before we'll be able to see some, some proper improvements coming out of that. Anyway, main event. Let's go with Okamoto. And uh, let's go with... Who can he be partnered by? Let's go with Furusawa. Now obviously these two are going to... You know, there's a little bit of competition between them. Obviously Furusawa has a title shot... For the Lions Raw, which is our, you know, season finale. Essentially our biggest show of the year, more or less, in, in my eyes. And I think that's kind of the way it plays out. And then obviously Okamoto, like I've mentioned already, number one contender currently. With his uh, win over Funikoshi in the Grand Prix. Now I think they can take on the team of... Yeah, let's go with Rokimon Matsushita. And let's also go with... I don't really want to do Blaster Coma because he does his... Yeah, I think Yurigatai is perfect. Actually, maybe Suki. Let's go Suki. We haven't used him recently. Popularity is pretty good, though. All right, so I want to try and do 20 minutes, but obviously Rockimon might be a little bit of a problem. Either way, this should be a, a relatively good... You know, it's a good main event. And I'm really hoping that we'll... Hopefully see no morale issue penalty in the uh, road agent notes. Alright, so let's book the rest of the show. Uh, let's actually have like an eight-man tag with eight, uh, sorry, four of our tag teams. So let's go Ipitsutsai and Okamasa. And they can team up with Kamasaka and Kiyotaka. And then I kind of want to do something a bit strange. Let's go with Miura and Yoshizawa. And they can team up with the American Cobras as well. Obviously, these two are going to come to blows at the Lions Raw as well. Uh, we pr I would like to try and go 20 minutes, but it might not be possible. 
Uh, let's give Yoshizawa the victory as well. Don't really care who loses. But yeah, we're not going to be able to go for 20 minutes, are we? Yeah, we're definitely not. Okay. Well, we're going to have to change it. Let's go back down. Let's go to 14, I guess. That should should be fine. If it suit size being used too much. 13. Lucky number. Let's go. No, still being used too much. Okay. Surely a 10 minute match. Let's just go 11 minutes. You know, I don't even care anymore. All right. Steal the show. That should be fine. It is under 16 and 16 is kind of the the minimum amount or the sorry the maximum amount of time someone with an unimportant uh, unimportant push could have in regards to their overuse on a show all right let's exclude booked uh up next i think we want to go with we're going to continue on with the the whole shining force thing um but i think we'll give them a relatively easy tag team this week um, we'll give them Sotomura and Ozawa. And let's let's actually have Tori pick up the victory here. And that we might we I think we'll have another angle as well. And I'll sort of talk about what's uh what's gonna happen as a result of this in particular match. Uh we could also actually make that our Yeah, let's make that a technical masterclass. Although I don't think it's, it's probably not going to go down too well. Yeah, because we're getting a penalty now for Sofu's hour. Frustrating. Okay. Back down to 13 minutes. Let's, uh, let's actually find a technical masterclass that we can do. Let's actually go for another special singles match. I did kind of like that. I might actually do one singles match per, per show now, from now on. Let's go with Yuri Gataya. And I think he can take on, hmm, who has good technical ability? Which one of the young lions? All right, so Hosaka has 47. Diaz has 51. Let's go with Diaz. Obviously, I think everybody is kind of a, a big fan of Diaz, especially in the comments section. And like I said, we are, we are going to push him, even though he is technically, what, still like 18 or 19 years old. Uh, question, can he call a match? Let's have a look. Psychology, only 58. Okay, probably not. Is he a heel as well? Yeah, he's better as a heel. Okay. I kind of, in my head, I sort of saw him as a face. I know it doesn't really matter too much. But I always, for some reason, thought of him as a face. Anyway, that match will go first. Uh, I guess we also want to have a match. Let's go another six-man tag. And let's go with Big Bruiser Finley, Giant Brody, and Animal Harker. Uh, and I guess they can... Oh, we also forgot to fire the young, uh, the dojo graduates. So we'll do that this episode as well, if I remember. Of course, I did talk about it in the last episode. And we... Well, I say we. I just completely forgot, if I'm being honest. So there we go. Yeah, so let's go with the team of Shuga Amano, uh, Yuta Asono, and finally, uh, I guess Iki Hisaka, yeah. Just a, a 12 minute match, and we'll give, we'll give Finley the victory. I think we gave Brody a victory recently, so I'm going to try and balance it out just a little bit. Okay. Let's put that one there. All right, so let's do angles. Uh, and again, I think we we might have an angle between Okamoto and Mibuchi Furusawa. Let's, uh, let's go non-scripted as well. I do kind of like this, because like I was mentioning before, they are sort of involved in the same storyline at the moment with uh, Furusawa winning the, the Grand Prix, and of course Okamoto getting a victory over Funakoshi uh, during the group stage of the Grand Prix. So that's perfect. Uh, what else do we want to do? We wanted to do 
the Shining Force angle. So let's have Birnaku Kintori, Tanya Toshisai, and I'll, I'll kind of explain it once we actually get into it a little bit. So there we go. They're not actually in a storyline. I should probably put, put them in one. It might be intelligent to do so. Anyway, there we go. All right, let's do a cheeky little six-man pre-show match. Uh, and let's have Team Taku, and I guess they can be joined by... Uh, where is he? Ginji Kasaka. Uh, I know he's with the Explosive Stable, but at the moment I just kind of... Actually, I guess I could use... Yeah, let's use somebody else, and I'll come back to, to him. Let's go with Goto, I suppose. And then they can take on the team of... Cloaked in, uh, let's, let's go Mitsukuri and Kinoshita. They are kind of a bit of a favorite of mine at the moment. And they can also be joined by, uh, I guess Kubo. We haven't really used Kubo much, if at all, to be honest. And I guess we'll give Goto the victory to try and shift his momentum back in our favor a little bit as well. Uh... Anyone can be the road agent for that one, doesn't really matter too much. And then I guess we'll do one more, one more pre-show match with Blast and Ginji Kasaka. So explosive. And they can actually take on Cloaked in Shadows, I think. Yeah, that works out pretty well. Okay. Obviously Blast's going to pick up the victory. Nice. Okay. Well, that looks like a, a pretty good show, in my opinion. Who's in this match? Okay. Yeah, that looks like a good show. Let's uh, let's run it. All right, so we start off with a 50-rated pre-show match where we have Nalzane Goto and Team Taku defeating Nobuyuki Kubo and Mitsukuri and Kinoshita in 12 and a half minutes when Nal Nalzane Goto, excuse me, pinned Nobuyuki Kubo with a Goto slam. And unfortunately, yeah, Toshinobu Taku seemed off his game, which is very, very strange considering he's like 52 years old. And you would you would assume he'd be pretty consistent, although maybe he got maybe he's a little bit sloppy in his old old age, I guess. And uh, the other person was Kubo, um, who's not very good, and he's also uh, not used very often, so he's pretty much as bad as he was when we started the game. Anyway, moving on to the other pre-show match, getting a 42. We have Blastacoma and Ginji Kasaka defeating Cloaked in Shadows in just under 12 minutes when Blastacoma pinned Shadow Ichimori with a Northern Lights Bomb. And yeah, Ginji Kasaka with a 37 in-ring performance. That's pretty good. Obviously, Blast carrying the match as well. Actually, good to see that uh, neither of these two uh, Cloaked in Shadows members were off their game, which is almost a first, really. Alright, so we then start the show off with a 52-rated technical masterclass. Where we have Masashi Urigataya defeating James Diaz in 1521 by pinfall with a jumbo backdrop suplex. Good match. We then go into a 61-rated angle where we have... Our Shining Force tag team, being Bunraku Kintori, Tanya Toshisai. Um, I, I think I was going to put this one after the match, but I've obviously messed up the placement. Um, but yeah, so I guess in this angle, I was going to, I guess we'll change what I was going to say. Um, so Bunraku Kintori obviously upset that Toshisai caused their team to lose last week. Uh, and he's saying, uh, just just follow me. Just, just watch what I do in our match. Just make sure, you know, take some notes. Everything will be fine. You know, let, let me do my thing tonight. And I promise we'll get the victory over, you know, a pretty experienced tag team that we're taking on. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Bunaku Kintori was very poor when trying to improvise dialogue. Usually he's pretty good off script. So that's, that's a strange one. The match itself, um... Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. I think I might have messed this one up quite a bit. I obviously leaved, uh, left, left the slow build option on. 
Uh, because I did, I did want to make it 20 minutes or... Did I, yeah, did I want to make it 20? I think I tried to. Anyway, Shining Force defeat Sotomura and Azawa in 13-24 when Brindu Kugan Tori pinned Sofu Azawa with a flying forearm off the top rope. And yeah, as you'd expect, Sofu Azawa being the weak link. Uh, but as you can see down here, um, slow build was left on, so they obviously didn't have enough time to tell the story um, of a, you know, a, a free-flowing match with a slow build. Pretty bad, 42. Uh, but again, these guys are, are really old and really unpopular. And uh, Ozawa is quite bad. He's deteriorated into... He's essentially worse than a young lion at the moment. So, there we go. Alright, we then go straight into our eight-man sort of tag team turmoil match. Uh, it is four on four. Um, and we kind of have... Uh, some interesting, you know, matchups between two teams on each side of the, the four men. It's a 58, and we have our current champions, Miura and Yoshizawa, and the American Cobras, essentially the the true number one contenders, the winners of Tag Mania. And they defeat Ipitsutsai and Okamasa, and Kamasaka and Kiyotaka in just under 11 minutes, when Inajiro Yoshizawa pinned Yori Ipitsutsai, with a Yoshizawa bomb, and Ipitsutai was the weak link, and uh, unfortunately, Kiyotaka seemed off his game. Yeah, pretty good match. Um, the Cobras are just outperforming everybody. They're even outperforming the uh, the current champions, which is, you know, it's a bit strange. It is a little bit strange. Okay. It's a good match, though. I'm happy with that. We then go into our six-man tag, where we have our stable... Sorry, it gets a, a 48, which is not great, uh, but it is three young lions. And we have Import defeating Shuga Amano, Yuta Asono, and Iki Hisaka, yeah, Iki Hisaka in 12-16. And Big Bruiser Finley pinned Yuta Asono with an Atomic Spine Buster. It's not a great match. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. It's, it's kind of a, a throwaway match. More just for the young lions than anything else. Uh, but obviously, you know, they need a lot of work still. They really do. Maybe not a Sono as much as the other two, but... Yeah, they definitely need something. Anyway. The main event we go into gets a 73 rating. Which is... It's, it's average. It's average. It's nothing special, but it's also... It's not too bad. And we have Reizan Okamoto and Mibuchi Furusawa... Defeating Rokumon Matsushita and Suki in 20 minutes 22 seconds when Reizan Okamoto pinned Suki with a brain buster suplex. Yeah, really, really good match. Well, not a really good match. It's it's an okay match, but considering Rokumon's in there, you know, it, it did a decent job. Anyway, let's uh, check this dirt sheet here. Because I want to see what we've got. Okay. Still got low morale. Okay, that's that's not great. Yeah, okay, so we, we're literally going to have to get rid of all the morale issues for people not to get uh, penalised. Anyway, the following or subsequent angle gets a 74, which I think is pretty good. And of course, Okamoto and Furusawa going back and forth. And of course, Okamoto... O Okamoto? What, what? Yeah, messing my words up. Anyway, Okamoto... Uh, says to Furusawa that at the Lions Raw, he is going to be the World Heavyweight Champion. So he's kind of uh, trying to intimidate him a little bit, saying that you know he's he might expect to be facing Funakoshi, as that's who you know is essentially the the current champion. However, Okamoto has a chance to win the title himself and go on to the Lions Raw uh, and take on Furusawa in that big match. Yeah. I think that's a pretty cool angle. 74 is not too bad either. Uh, unfortunately, Furusawa did not do well without a script to follow. Overall show rating getting us a 54. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we kind of messed up that one. Um, as you can see, uh, the two eight-minute angles have obviously outweighed the uh, the wrestling throughout the show and obviously our fans really want to see a proper wrestling show. Uh, pretty much pure wrestling. 
Uh, so yeah, note to self, uh, have one eight minute angle and one six minute angle and we should be fine instead of making them both. So obviously the, the 54 rating for the overall show, not exactly a true reflection of, of what we just witnessed. It would have been probably a 65 had we not, uh, not got that penalty. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Still increases our popularity in those lower regions. Uh, the regions that are about 18 or 18 or 19. Interesting opinion here from Bunuku Gintori, uh, and he thinks that Masashi Urugataya doesn't connect, uh, connect with the fans. And we should probably write him off. That's, uh, that's interesting. Okay. It's like, cool, cool story, bro. Um, yeah. That's a, that's a strange one. I don't really get that opinion. Anyway. Gonna go with another $2,000 fine, uh, $2,000, not fine, a bonus. And we're gonna get rid of the morale issues. So there we go. Now has no morale issues, so that's perfect. Uh, I guess in the future, if we ever want to try and improve Big Bruiser Finley's attitude, uh, it's probably going to cost us about four grand as well. Obviously, we don't exactly need him right now, so that's fine. Um, but you know, he will eventually get his uh, get his opportunity for a world title fairly soon, because we, we're going to try and book import to be a little bit stronger than they are at the moment, even though Giant Brody is currently the uh, Challenger Series champion. Anyway, I'm going to take a quick sip of water here, and I'm going to continue with the... Well, speaking of Giant Brody, asking for a pay request. Perfect. I mean, he was being paid 50 per appearance, so... You know, seeing as he's kind of one of our champions, it's, it's pretty fitting. Anyway... Alrighty, so let's get into some meddling. Um, and I guess we'll go with... Let's go with Animal Harka and uh, Shadow Ichimori. No effect. Okay, we've still got a lot of issues on that front. A lot of uh, tension between people. Which is uh, really not good. It's really not good. Obviously, the higher backstage rating you have, the better. And with all those issues, I'm assuming we're not very high... I'm not exactly sure how to check, but either way, I'm assuming that's going to be pretty low. Anyway. Alright, so tonight's main event, uh, let's go for a... I guess another tag match. I don't really want to... I was thinking about doing like six-man tags and stuff for the main event. Um, but I'll, honestly, it's probably just going to drag the ratings down a little bit. Anyway. Unikoshi is going to be teaming up with... Uh, long... Uh, long Distant tag team partner in Suki. Of course, they were teamed up in the Tag Mania tournament. And, uh, yeah, they, they're going to come back together tonight for a, for our main event. Uh, I don't know who they're going to be versing, though. It's an interesting question. Um, maybe we'll give them an opportunity against Miura and Yoshizawa. That could be, uh, that could be pretty interesting. So we'll go 20 minutes. Uh, I think... We want to give Funika. Let's give Suki the victory. Yeah, I want to give. I want to give Suki the victory. I do like him. And I, I definitely want to try and use him a little bit more. Um, he doesn't really have anything going on at the moment. We can maybe have him feud against Big Bruiser Finley. Uh, so speaking of Finley, let's uh, let's have him team up with Animal Harker, and uh, they can pretty much just take on a. Let's have him take on Mitsukuri and Kinoshita. That'll be an interesting match. And we'll give Finley another win here. Want to try and maintain his momentum going forward. Obviously, Young Lions not exactly going to be... to be doing too much, you know? Not yet, anyway. I do really like these two guys, though. Mitsukuri and Kinoshita. They are, they are relatively good. Actually, Mitsukuri is better than Kinoshita. 
Although Kinoshita has better star quality, better charisma. Interesting. I might actually make that the steal the show match. I think that can be a pretty good one. Definitely could be good. All right, so up next we'll go with a six man tag. Uh, and let's actually form a stable. So let's form that stable with Kamazaka, Kiyotaka, and Masashi Urugataya. And um, I think I want to call them... I was going to call them Unburdened, but I kind of don't like that name now. All right, so I've got, got to think of a name. Maybe you guys can give me a name and we'll, we'll do it next episode. So if you've got a suggestion for this team, uh, don't call them Baldy Locks or something like that. I want a, a serious, badass name for that stable. Because um, we will try and use them going forward. Obviously, Yuriga Tires, I kind of see him as like an upper mid-carder. Uh, also, let me let me get out of this for a second. I almost forgot. Let's go into the roster. And let's fire these guys. Uh, can I fire them right now? I probably can't fire them right now, can I? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think you can fire people. Yeah. Yeah, you can't fire people during this part of the day. So I'm probably going to forget. Hopefully I don't. Anyway, back to the match. So Yurigataya along with Kamasaka Kiyotaka. And I guess they can take on... They can take on Shining Force, and then we'll chuck another person into that, onto that team. Uh, maybe Masashita. Yeah, that kind of works. Uh, we can probably give it a decent amount of time. 16 minutes, maybe. And I think it could also be our technical masterclass. Although Rockymon is pretty low. Maybe not. I mean, everyone else in the match has really good technical. I want to maybe. I think I might change him out. Let's go with someone else. Uh, who else has pretty good? Maybe Shiruku Okamasa. Yeah, let's go Shiruku Okamasa. And we'll try and give it twenty minutes. We'll try. And let's give the win to Okamasa. Maybe. Yeah, let's go Okamasa. I do like him. He's one of the, the sort of underrated guys on our roster that I don't really use too much. Um, but I think 20 minutes is probably going to be way too long. With uh, with him and maybe Kia Taka involved as well. All, all three of them, essentially. Interesting. Alright, let's try 16. Because we've got, we got a slow build on it. Okay, perfect. 16 is fine. That'll be our first match on the card. Uh, we also need a... I guess we're going to go another singles match. Let's... Uh, I know it's sort of untraditional for a Japanese tour show to have a title defense, but let's give let's give Giant Brody a bit of a squash match. Um, do I want to give him one of the, the guys we're letting go? Pretty sure this guy was the, the better of the two. If I remember. Actually, maybe not. Uh, let's use this guy. Was he the better? Yeah, not really. Um, maybe we won't use either of those guys. Let's go with Kubo. Uh, it's going to be a five-minute match. Kind of a, almost a joke to an extent. Uh, it's just going to be Giant Brody dominating and absolutely ragdolling our boy Kubo here. There we go. Five minute squash match with the title on the line. Um, and it's it's sort of Brody just making a, a bit of a mockery of the title. And uh, yeah, absolutely destroying a young lion in the process. Alright, up next we'll go with a another tag team match. Of course, you know, Brody being from import, he's, uh, he's a bit of a dick. So, there we go. Uh, once again, let's actually, let's go with Blaster Coma and Ginji Kasaka again. And I think they can actually take on the American Cobras. I think that'll be a pretty good match. Obviously, it's going to get penalized for not being long enough. But let's, uh, let's, let's go with it. I like it. 
You know, they were on the pre-show being uh, explosive, the two members. Let's give them an opportunity together on the uh, on the main show. And of course, the, the two highlights are going to be posted everywhere. All right, so we're at 76 minutes. Like I said, we should be able to get away. Maybe I'll just book one more match. I don't know. Let's just go for one more match. And I guess we, we don't actually need a pre-show match maybe on this show. Let's go with the Rockymon Matsushita. And he can be partnered by Furusawa. Uh, and they can take on... Let's, yeah, let's go with Yoki Kawa and Sen. I kind of like that match. And then we'll give the victory to Furusawa. And everything should be fine. All right. Does it need to be scripted? I don't think it needs to be scripted. Let's call it. And just hope and pray that it's going to be a little bit better than I think it might be. Okay. Now we can definitely do an angle here. So Funakoshi. Go with Funakoshi and Suki. Obviously they need to just, you know, kind of get back on the same page together. Been some, quite some time since they've, uh, they've teamed up with each other. And uh, there was a bit of, you know, a bit of something going on there. Or Suki trying to get involved in that triple threat match we had quite some time ago. Uh, prior to the, the start of the Grand Prix Tour. Uh, which was the reason why they sort of fell apart as a tag team. So they're, they're going to come back together. Obviously Suki's kind of nowhere near the, the world title storyline at the moment. Obviously Okamoto's first in line. And then of course Furusawa as well. And then even maybe Finley behind him. So it'll be pretty interesting. And like I said, we, we need to find something for Suki to do. And I guess if we reform this tag team, we can kind of use them going forward on tour shows and stuff. Uh, and then I guess the other angle, we could go with maybe Giant Brody. Let's just go with like a Menace angle for Giant Brody. Uh, so just a four, four minute angle, nice and quick. And uh, there we go. And that's obviously, should it come before? I guess it would come before, and it's just him being a, being a massive menace. You know, giant, calling out, uh, you know. Basically, in my mind, I'll explain it when we get into it. Anyway, let's let's save it and let's get into the show. All right, so we started with a 59 where we have Shiruku Okamasa and Shining Force defeating Masashi Rigataya and Kamasaka and Kiyotaka in 15 minutes or 15 and a half minutes when Shiruku Okamasa submitted Kiyotaka with a Scorpion Deathlock. Yeah, pretty good match. Okamasa, obviously the, uh, the worst performer in the match, but I wanted to give him the victory and obviously it's going to... It's still going to play a little bit more into these two here, being Shining Force. Of course, Tori is probably going to have some choice words to say about the fact that Okamasa picked up the pinfall and Tanya Toshisai did not. Very un He's basically going to be very unimpressed. We then move into a 55, where we have the American Cobras defeating Blastacoma and Ginji Kasaka in 11.35 when Marvel Malloy pin Kisaka with a Cobra Strike. Obviously, Kisaka going to be the weak link. Uh, he was also off his game, and then Storm Spillane was really off his game in this one. But a 55 is really good. Happy with that. All right, so we then go into a 57 rated Menace Angle, and uh, basically, it's Giant Brody standing in the middle of the ring with his title. And of course, the, the title looks small, over the shoulder of Giant Brody. And uh, he basically says that he's, he's going to give anybody an opportunity to win the Challenger Series title, uh, but he's going to choose who, it's gonna, well, who the opponent for him tonight is going to be. And he points to the crowd, looks around, sees one of the young lions at ringside, points at uh, Kubo with his orange hair, and says, you, get in the ring right now. Um, you, you're getting into, you know, you're essentially getting a title opportunity. And, uh, it's not going to go too well. The match itself only gets a 35, but I kind of expected that. 
And uh, we have Giant Brody defeating Nobuyuki Kubo in 525 with a by pinfall with a single-handed choke slam. And Giant Brody makes his uh, first defense of the BCG Challenger Series title. And uh, yeah, he kind of made a bit of a joke of it. He's of course the the from the import stable. He's a bit of an asshole. Obviously, very anti-Japan and um, kind of di- disrespectful as well to the Japanese crowd. Um, hence, having a title match on a tour show like this as well. Uh, let me have a look. Was it a well-booked squash match? Yeah, there we go. Got a segment bonus for being a well-executed squash. I'm not sure about Kubo's selling, so the the rating was pretty bad. But either way, it's fine. We then go into a 49 rated tag match where we have Big Bruiser Finley and Animal Harker defeating Mitsukuri and Kinoshita in just over 12 minutes when Big Bruiser Finley in Koyo Kinoshita with a trash compaction. Interesting uh, finishing maneuver. Finishing maneuver. Yeah, the trash compaction. He's got the Atomic Spine Buster and the trash compaction. Nice. All right, yeah, 49's okay, considering these two are young lions, so I'm happy with that. Uh, we then go into our pre-main event match, I guess. We don't, well, we do have a pre-main event angle, but this one actually does really well getting a 64. But we have Rokimon Masashita and Mabuchi Furusawa defeating Yokikawa and Sen in 12 and a half minutes when Furusawa submitted Sujiru Sen with a Furusawa armbar. And as you'd expect... Mabuchi Furusawa head and shoulders above everybody else. Rocky Mon with a 63 though, so that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. And, uh, oh, that's interesting. Look at that. Matsushita and Furusawa showed excellent chemistry teaming together. We've got a new tag team. Matsushita and Furusawa. That's actually going to be really helpful for our next uh, Tag Mania. Awesome. I was wondering why this match did that well. Considering uh, Yoki Kawa and Sen are just really not over. They're, they're good, but they're not over. Okay. Alright, we then go into a 64 rated angle. And again, like I said, we have Funakoshi and Suki coming back together. And uh, essentially, becoming tag team partners again. Obviously, it's not known if they're, they're going to be partners going forward again like they used to be. Back during the, the Tag Mania days. But obviously right now, you know, they're coming together for tonight. Uh, obviously in in the, the series, they will be essentially getting back together. Uh, primarily for, you know, just two a show matches like this one. Um, without re- any real pay-per-view, you know, main event type shows that we have. The match itself, it does pretty well. Again, it's sort of just average. It's what we, you know, need to be getting, I guess. Getting a 74 rating here. And we have Funakoshi and Suki defeating Miura and Yoshizawa in 20 minutes, 27 seconds. When Suki submitted Inajiro Yoshizawa with a Suki special three. And yeah, they actually get a victory over the current tag team champions. So uh, you might you might be thinking that they're going to get a tag team title shot. We don't know yet. Anyway, let's finish the show. And we, we do indeed get a 69 overall show rating. Uh, which is, like I said in the last episode, it's pretty much our consistent rating. Any any like average show that we do, so like your typical average show, pretty much gets a 69. So, I'm happy, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy with that. It's good enough to raise our popularity in the other seven regions. You know, apart from Kansai. And I've just got to, got to hope and pray that our our main event for our pay per views is going to be going to be good enough to to get a, a decent rating for our our main pay per view show. Now, if I go down here, as you can see, test of champions. It's uh, it's going to be an interesting one, that's for sure. Anyway, I want to check a couple of things. Obviously, Okamoto, fifty eight popularity still. Uh, who else? I mean, there's nobody else to really check, to be honest. I mean, the, the popularity is kind of capped. Ooh. 
Tory's taken a bit of a dip down to 56, but should be pretty easy to come back up. Uh, we've got a 45 there for Giant Brody. So he's uh, he's definitely... Let's have a look at that. I'm going to track that progress. So he started off on 38, and he's gone up to a, a 45 now. So we've definitely, definitely made some progress with him. And he does indeed have very hot momentum. He's also, also pretty good. He is relatively good. 70 star quality there as well. Yeah, I like it. Uh, let's check Razor Nakamoto as well. Yeah, still still stuck at 58. Okay. Well, that's pretty much going to wrap up the episode, guys. Make sure you smash the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, also, which channel? Down the link. Well, it is a link in the description down below, as well as uh, the place where you can go purchase PW 2020. Apart from that, guys, as always, take it easy and goodbye.